DV5 have just released a brand new feature called Design Variables for DV5. This is a feature that I've been praying for a very long time and finally my prayers have been answered. Let me show you how to use this. Perhaps this is something that you may want to start using right away because it is really, really cool. Okay, so let me show you how it works. So let's start off by creating a brand new page. So I'm gonna come over here and click on page and we are going to just name this page test two right click on use the div builder and then what we need to do is to first off start by creating all our variables that way it is much much easier to work and this is a good workflow all right so let me show you how to add your variables so the new addition to this ui is this icon here that looks like what does it look like discs okay anyway you just click here on variable manager and we have quite a few here to choose from so you can see we have numbers text images and so on so let's for example start with the numbers because i'm really excited about the numbers here because here we can go in and enter pretty much all the day-to-day -day things that we can use as we're designing our website okay so you can enter pretty much whatever you want so let's go ahead and enter let's say heading three so you just go in and type in heading three now if you prefer to just call it h3 I mean, pretty much that's up to you. It doesn't really matter what you name it here as long as you remember it. Okay, so the next we're going to add the size here. So for this, let's set this to 2.5 rem, for example. Okay, so now you can see my value here is in rem and everything looks good. Now, what is also cool here is you can also add your clamp numbers because clamp allows you to have a website that is fluid and dynamic. So once you enter your values, pretty much your website will be fluid and dynamic. And I would highly recommend that rather than just entering the numbers solid as I'm doing right now. This is just for demo purposes only, but this is the way to go. All right. So let's say I save my variables like that. I'm just going to hit publish and then I'm going to start applying them. So the idea here is when we go in and designing our site, for example, here, I'm going to add my heading since we've just added a heading in there. So I'm going to select this, come over here to my heading, and then I'm going to go to my heading text. So here is where you can add your variable. So you notice that when I hover over here, you can see this icon here again. This is your variables. And now my variables are showing. So you can see here, this is our heading three, heading two, and I also have my clamp, I have my body and so on. So at this stage, if you just click on body, this will just take on the body clamp size. Again, I can go in, change this to heading three. If I want to change this to a heading one, I can also go ahead and do that. I can just come over here, go to heading one. Now this one here has clamp, which is brilliant. So you can see here it's nice and big. So this is how you want to be designing. So let's say we have this value here, three rem for our heading. I can save. Now let's say you have it in multiple places across your whole website. So your size is three rem across the whole website. Now you can imagine if something was to go wrong and you decide, you know what, I want to reduce my heading size to perhaps maybe two rem. What will that mean is you'd have to go across the whole website and make updates on every single place that you've entered three rem. But with design variables, you don't have to do that because you can just adjust it in one central place and the update will be done. Let me show you how. So right now we are on this one here, the three rem. So let's say I want to change three rem to a different size. I can just scroll down here and here's my heading two is three rem. I can increase it. Now you can see right away that it is increasing. Now, because I've set it here as a variable, let me just hit apply. This size here, wherever I've used the size, it is going to update and that is pretty much across the whole website. So this is why these variables are very, very powerful. I know I've been very vocal about variables as this is some, something that needs to be done or that, that we need to have in a design tool like Divi. And finally we have it and you can see how powerful it is. Now, let me show you another way to use this. And this is by applying our color palette. So again, I've been very vocal about the color palette, talking about how there isn't a cohesive way of working with color in Divi, but finally this here will solve all those problems. Okay, so let's say you want to add all your colors here. So you can see so far it comes in with the primary color, the secondary color, the text and the body. So what you do here is you go to a tool like Coolers 
and then you create your color palette. So here I have a basic color palette. I'm going to copy my main a primary color here, and then I'm just going to go in and paste it like that. Go back. This is my secondary color. I'm going to copy that, come back in here and just replace it. And I can continue on and add my text color, body color and so on. But I want to add my own. OK, so these are going to be my shades. So I'm going to call this now. I'm just naming this whatever I want. By the way, you can name this whatever you want. So I'm going to call these base colors. OK, so I'm going to call it base 100. OK, so over here now, these are just going to be my my shades. So I'm going to start off with this one here. Select it, copy it, come over here. And then I'm going to paste it like that. So I can continue on. This one here can be base 200. So when I'm designing now, pretty much all my colors will be exactly where I want them. So I'm going to copy that one as well. Click here to copy and then paste. Now I'm not going to do all these colors here because at least now you can see pretty much how to use these. Okay. So now that I have my colors here, maybe on the body color, I could, I could just go in and change it a little bit. Again, this UI is pretty cool because you can see here that I can make some changes right here in my, in my design tool. Okay. Let's apply. So, okay. So we have all our colors in place now. I'm just going to hit save and refresh just to make sure that everything is what is working. Okay. Right. So now that we have refreshed this, let's go in and uh, let's design something here. So I'm going to go in and add a text module like that. So let's go in and give it a bit of padding. So I'm going to come over here, go to spacing and let's go with two rem. Okay. So it's going to be the same all around. Okay. So we have our um, padding around this. So the next step now is to add a background color. So I'm going to come over here. Now notice that to access these colors, you need to go into global. Okay. So you don't, they don't show up here. I would think that it would be better if they showed here, but then again, you know what? These are global colors. So it's best they're here. So look, we have our base 100 and it's labeled as well. We have our base 200 and it's labeled as well because this is coming from here. Okay. So this is where I've set it. Look at that. So that's my base 200, base 100. So when I hover over here, it shows. Now look at that. As soon as I click there, it now applies and I can go with the lighter version. So anywhere across the whole website where I apply this, it is going to be added. So, so let's add a, another regular section here and let's add a text module. And this could be, uh, let's say text. So I'm going to go in and choose a variable here. And the cool thing is I can just select it like that, or I can go with the bigger one, but I need to adjust my line height for that. So that needs to be in place for that to work properly. Oops, that's not looking good. Okay, that's still that's still selected, by the way. So let's go in and delete that. Okay, let's get rid of this again. All right, so we're back to normal. But anyway, I wanted to show you the background and how they work. So I'm going to come over here, go to global, and I'm going to do the same thing. Apply my color, and this is the base 100. Okay, great. So now that I've applied the color to these two places here as a background, I'm going to hit save. Let's say for whatever reason, we want to change that base 100. Okay. So let's come over here and let's choose a color from here. And let's say our base 100 has changed. It's now this color. So I can now go back to my site, go to my variables here, and then I'm going to go to my colors, go to base 100, which is right here. And then I'm just going to paste my color like that. Hit save. Now notice that it has now been updated. This is very, very powerful when it comes to cases where you want to do a rebrand of the website, or perhaps maybe you want to make some tweaks here and there as you're designing your website. This, by the way, is global. Wherever you've used the colors from the variable manager, these colors or the text or the sizes are going to be applied across the whole website. I'm really, really excited about this workflow. It's really going to make our design process much, much streamlined. And we're also going to have consistency when we design our. All right. So let's take a look at other things here. So we also have images. We have links. We have fonts. Now, I like the font one here because you can set up your fonts right away over here. So, for example, you can see this is Poppins. I can go in and change this to another font. So 
we can change this to able for example and i'll hit apply and save that okay so when we refresh wherever we've added the heading it is going to be updated across the whole website as you can see here this has been changed to able so this is huge so the design workflow it has to be different now you have to start off by coming over here first defining all your fonts i'm, I'm going to change this to pop-ins by the way because i prefer a pop-ins so let's go ahead and select that great so that's going to be my heading and this is my body font it's called inter and i can also add more fonts here so i can call this accent so this could be my accent font now i don't really recommend using three fonts as you're designing your website but of course if this is what you want to do i mean you can go ahead and do that so i have this abril fat face i'm gonna go ahead and apply that oh what a name anyway so you add all your fonts here that you need for your design Next, you would go in and enter all your colors. You want to add your primary color, secondary color, all your neutral colors, and also your colors for your headings and your body text color. Once you've entered this, it's going to make it very, very easy for you to design your website based on what you've entered here. Now, we also have links. So we can add global links here as well. So you can name it whatever you want. And this will be a link that will work. In fact, you know what? I don't want to talk too much. Let me just add it in here so let's say my link here is to another website so i'm going to call this site crafter for example and then here the url will be the website itself so i'm just going to go to sitecrafter.com and this is the site so back over here paste the url okay so i'm going to go ahead now and save and hit apply so whenever i have site crafter if i decide to change the url Wherever I have Sidecrafter, it's just going to change to this URL. So let's say Sidecrafter remains like that. This now can be, for example, Div University. So whenever you have Sidecrafter here, it's going to be changed to Div University across the whole website. So again, that is another powerful, powerful feature. You can also do the same with your images here. You can add a global image. So with the images, you can upload the image. To your media library in fact i don't have any images here let's find an image so i'm going to head over to pexels like that and let's see if we just have okay i'm going to use this one here in fact no let's use let's use that one so i'm going to go ahead now and download it so i'm going to download a small version okay now it's downloaded so back over here i'm going to hit select downloads folder and then we're going to click on select Okay, so that's our image now. I can name it. So I'm going to call this a Mac image. Okay, and save the variable. So you can add all your global images in here and apply them as you're designing your website. Okay, so let's see if we refresh this. Is this going to go back to what we had before? Let's wait and see. There you go. It's now changed. So let's add something else here. So we're going to add our image. So with our image now selected, notice that when I hover over here, we have the dynamic content. So I'm going to click here and we have Mac image. Look at that. Guys, I'm loving this because you can add pretty much all your images that you want in your variables. And the website is going to have those images across. And at any point, if you want to change the image, you can just change the variable and those images will change wherever that you've used them. So I think this is a very, very powerful feature. And I can't wait to see this updated because ideally we want to have a way of exporting our variables in case we want to use them across different websites. So you know how we can, or we used to be able to export our presets. I would really love it if we can export this. In fact, this is going to be the case anyways. We are going to be able to export these variables and import them on a totally different site if we need to do that. So this is very exciting news when it comes to the Divi Builder itself. I mean, Divi 5 is releasing a lot of features pretty much every two weeks. And I can't wait to see the Flexbox, the Loop, and also the grid system. I mean, this is really, really amazing. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments box below. I know I've been rushing this a bit quickly and I haven't really shown you the great extent that we can use this, but I am going to be doing more tutorials showing you how to use this. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again in the next one. Take care.